Welcome back to the Spencer Tarot. My name is James Spencer. I am a psychic, a metaphysician, a clinical hypnotherapist, and I offer for students 15 and older in the U.S. through online or in Long Beach, California in person, tarot and psychic divination certification courses, handwriting analysis courses, courses in uh, hypnotism and clinical hypnotherapy, and courses that are advanced on learning how to conduct past life regressions. I am the owner of Intuitive Wholeness, located in Long Beach, California, where I do psychic readings, tarot readings, uh, again, hypnosis, regression, and, uh, you know, I'm a creativity and life coach. And in addition, I am the owner of Spencer Artist Development, and my main business is I work with um, advanced, talented artists, specifically actors, voiceover artists, musicians, and models in preparing for the careers in the arts. And I am professor of the University of West London for their drama and music grade and diploma programs. Today, um, I was asked, could you please show me a highly effective relationship tarot spread and I would like to today do that. I use, of course, my own cards, the Spencer Tarot, but my favorite deck other than my own <laughs> is the Toth deck uh, created by Aleister Crawley with artwork by Lady, uh, Lady Frida Harris. And with that deck, I feel it works at a multi-dimensional level. Most decks out there are relatively good about giving you um, the gist of what's happening or, you know, reading, you know, the potential for the future, but they don't get into the deeper core issues that can make for lasting change, that can release ancestral karma and toxic patterns you're holding on to, to bring you into a much more higher vibration and spiritual maturity. And that's what the spreads that I have on my Spencer Tarot channel will do for you if you choose. And they go deeper than most readings. And they can create some upheaval, meaning sometimes we have a lot of work to do on ourselves to transform. And this will get right to the heart of the issue quickly. So in preparing for your partner spread, I suggest using either the Aleister Crawley Toth deck, my deck, the um, Spencer Tarot, but of course you may use any deck of your choice. A lot of beginners, of course, use Rider Waite, and that's uh, a relatively good deck to use, but maybe you have a special deck you're connected to, and that's perfectly fine. It should work with all decks, and it should work with wherever your current consciousness is. And so go with your intuition as part of being a psychic. So what you will do is have your client that you're reading for uh, shuffle the tarot cards at least three times. And with their left hand, create three piles away from themselves while they are focusing on questions concerning their partner. So when we say partner, this works for anyone. It could be husband and wife, husband and husband, wife and wife. It could be um, friendship. It could be lover. It could be, you know, boss and um, employee. This works for many different types of relationships. But it's usually most used nowadays for romantic relationships. After your friend uh, cuts the cards into three decks with the left hand, 
then put the deck they pick as the deck on the top. And then lay the cards out in the spread that I'm showing you now. There are 12 cards. Six cards for the first partner representing the person you're reading for. And the uh, cards on the bottom for the second partner. Getting started. Flip over the first card and the second card. So I should have said that when you start, have all the cards face down so you can't see them. And the reason for doing that is good to turn them over so you're focusing on one thing at a time that your uh, person you're reading for can understand and take notes on. So when you turn over the first and second card, uh, the question is, what can I learn from you? And let's say I'm just going to do some, uh, make up some things. Maybe the first partner, they turn over the card and they get art. And maybe the second partner gets the fool. And you go, hmm, interesting. So the first card, what can I learn from you? Uh, to value and to utilize my artistic gifts. And what might the second card be? Uh, he's saying the fool. And maybe it's you need to be a little bit more courageous and fearless in our relationship and not get so scared about moving forward with us. There you go. Uh, let's turn over the third and fourth card. What do I expect from you? And maybe the third card of the first partner says deep love, two of cups. And the person on the, uh, on the bottom, their card says debauchery. And you go, wow, that's different. So it's showing you where something might be out of balance in the relationship. One partner is ready for deep love and commitment, and the other partner is using some kind of vice, maybe alcoholism or smoking or food, to mask over deeper fears or deeper problems that they are facing in getting through and developing a deeper connection. So there's no blame game, but this brings awareness to areas that the people in the relationship need to work on. So maybe the first partner is like, well, how can I support you get over your addiction? And let's talk about this. And this is what is sometimes hard in relationships. One person is more spiritually evolved and the other is stuck. And the partner that, let's say, is moving towards addiction and debauchery, maybe they're ready for change, and maybe they're not. And their decision is going to affect the other partner. So the other partner might be like, if you're not willing to face your addiction, I'm out of this relationship because I love myself enough to know that this is not right for me. Or maybe the partner's like, yeah, I have a problem and there were some things that happened before I entered this relationship that brought me into this addictive behavior and I need to face it. And now the other partner is like, I'm here for you. Let's work on this together because I want to be with you. And this is where the relationship can grow quickly and get to a space that is much more positive. How can I be more supportive? The fifth and sixth card. And maybe uh, one gets um, the Prince of Dis or the Prince of Coins, which is physicality. And the other one, uh, the other card gets the Devil. How about that? Okay. So one person is like, um, you could be more supportive by, um, you know, being in exercise and in um, 
you know, working on bodies together. Maybe as a couple, we're going to work on eating better and working out together. And um, the devil represents, hey, maybe one, the other partner um, is a workaholic. And it's like, hey, we need to have a little bit more fun and do what bedevils us and indulge and maybe be more playful in our relationship. Or maybe we need um, to talk more about our sexual desires. Sometimes that's what the devil means. And, you know, where are we in inhibited sexually? Where, what are we not discussing? Um, what does the partners like sexually? And how do they like to make love? And maybe that's getting to, you know, a deeper issue. When we turn over the seventh and eighth cards, what can I do to be a better partner? Usually the cards that come up will tell areas that each person needs to work on in their relationship. So let's say the um, seven, the seventh card for the first partner comes up the emperor. And that represents they need to take more of a leadership role. Maybe they're not being as responsible with finances and paying bills or setting up finances for the future. Maybe they are in a mediocre job they hate and now it's time to really develop a career that's their passion. Or maybe it means going back to school to become a leader. And maybe the eighth card for the other partner might be something like the magician, which means they need to really communicate more. Maybe they're shutting down and not talking about what's really going on outside the relationship, like maybe at work or with family or fears they are facing. Also, the magician is about allowing and trusting as a relationship, bringing towards the couple things they need to have a deeper relationship and to grow. Now the ninth and 10th card. What does my partner need from me? Now we're in the reverse. So maybe the first partner gets a card and it says the universe. And um, it tells them that, what oh, they need the universe for me. They need to trust in this relationship that we are going to be together forever, the long haul, and that everything's going to work out. And maybe that person has a fear of, like, their last relationship didn't work out, and they're projecting that onto this relationship. And maybe the other card, uh, the 10th, card for the other partner comes up sorrow and maybe it's like they're still holding on to sadnesses or disappointments from their previous relationship before this relationship and projecting that on so maybe they have some forgiveness or some healing work to do now to the final two the 11th and 12th card what is the direction our relationship needs to take? And this is very revealing. It can show you what is not working in the relationship and how to fix it quickly. So let's say uh, the 11th card is abundance for the 11th card. And so it's saying that we as a couple need to work on our abundance consciousness and saving for the future, making plans for maybe, they're, you know, they're living in a studio apartment. Maybe they need to make plans to make more money and save together so they can move into a larger, uh, more conducive place to live. Or maybe it's saving for a house or real estate. Maybe it means a move to a more conducive location for both partners. And it's about making plans. And maybe the 12th card, you know, what direction does the relationship need to take? And it says the chariot. And that means, you know, traveling together. And maybe both partners have been so, um, you know, overworked with their jobs that they just need to get away and really reconnect. And that tells you a lot in a relationship of what you can do 
to heal things up quickly. Um, I love the partner spread. Um, it's very revealing and it's not putting any blame on one or the other partner. It's just shining light on areas, <clears throat> excuse me, where, uh, you know, the partners need to go to grow and to expand their spiritual consciousness. And it gets people out of the blame game. It gets the partners working together for their highest good. Sometimes I've actually done partner spreads where it shows that the partners are not right for each other, that nothing is working out and maybe it's time to part ways and that's okay too. Or maybe it shows that one person is invested and another person isn't. And it might show where one person is not being truthful in the relationship. Um, it can easily point out um, what I call codependencies, uh, where uh, maybe um, one partner is using his financial power over a partner who is using sex appeal to get what they want. So each person is using the other and it's not truly a high level relationship. And it's gonna point those things out. So, you know, what's interesting about the partner spread is all the lies, all the manipulations, all the shadiness, all the hiding the truth comes out. And what you might deal with if you have both partners in front of you is someone saying, I don't do that, but it's in the cards. So it's up to them to either own their behavior or they could stay stuck. And one thing you're going to have to do as a tarot reader is not be upset if a person is not re ready to change. Some people have to stay in their macchio and victimhood, and they have to hit rock bottom before they change, and others are ready to do the spiritual work it takes to develop a deeper relationship. Great. Thank you for joining me, and enjoy uh, your deck, uh, the Spencer Tarot or the Toth deck, or whichever deck you're using, and expand your knowledge of the tarot and divination. Have a beautiful day.